All right, welcome. This presentation will be about merging in quantum and KXO and KSM algorithms. And this is joint work with Maria Neya Pizincia. So we're going to be interested in merging algorithms for uh, in a very broad range of uh, applications. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce uh, the merging technique when we, there are many solutions for the problem. And then we're going to see that in the quantum setting. And then we're going to extend that to the single solution case. So although the main topic is quantum algorithms, are, we are going to remain at a very high level. So please, uh, you don't need to be a quantum expert. Um, so originally, the main idea was to solve these uh, problems, the generalized birthday problem. Uh, we're going to consider that uh, we're going to consider oracle versions of these problems, where we are given oracle access for random n bit to n bit function h. And uh, the first one is where there are many solutions. Uh, we're just looking for k. Um, elements uh, such that their image go to zero. And the second problem for us is the problem where there is a unique solution. Uh, so you restrict the output, the inputs of h to n over k bits and you want to find the single solution tuple. And the XO uh, that, I will, that we're going to take can be replaced by uh, modular additions everywhere, but it's just a bit more technical. So originally the, the problem was defined by using only by querying only lists and uh, we're going to consider an oracle here. Um, so there are many applications for this problem. Uh, sometimes there is a direct reduction to the KSM problem. So even if uh, the, this is, doesn't give the best necessary, the best uh, algorithm, um, this, uh, because there are dedicated ones, uh, sometimes we have good time memory traders, for example. So uh, for direct reduction, we have subsystem problem, priority check problem. LPN as well. Um, and the multiple encryption problem uh, is not directly uh, reducible to KSUM, but there are similar algorithms that will apply to it. So there has been uh, many works uh, on this topic, but uh, we can, uh, we're going to focus on the time complexity. I'd like to focus on the exponents, so uh, we're going to forget about all the uh, logarithmic improvements. So we actually need roughly two results. The first one is that the optimal query complexity is 2 to the number k, uh, because if you make 2 to the number k queries to h, then you can build 2 to the n k tuples and have k exo to 0 with high probability. And the second is the time complexity for general k in this many solution case, which is given by Wagner's algorithm on the next slide. And we are going to focus on that. So Wagner's algorithm works uh, by using this idea of merging. In the paper of Wagner, this is computing the join operator. Uh, if you have two lists that contains uh, elements, but let's say outputs of the function h, then it's really easy and it's really efficient to compute the join of these lists. The set of pairs uh, that uh, so of pairs from a1 uh, times l2 that um, partially collides on the first few bits. It's very really efficient because you can just assume that both lists are sorted and go through uh, both at the same time. And the time is uh, necessary is basically the time to uh, go through uh, the input lists and the time to produce the output list. Um, Wagner's algorithm uses this and applies this uh, recursively so it's a tree of merges uh, and it depends on log two of k because two to the log two of k is the biggest number. Uh, it's the biggest number of lists that we can merge in such a tree, a binary tree structure. I'm going to give an example. So we're going to take uh, four lists and we're going to keep four lists right until the end of this presentation. Okay. So. We start by uh, building these four lists and querying two to the end of three elements. When I say elements, it's simply x and h of x. Um, and then we're going to compute two joins, l1 join l2 and l3 join l4. So we merge 
uh, into these two intermediate lists. And we merge on n over 3 bits. So we obtain lists which are of size 2 to the n over 3 as well, on expectation. And then we merge n over time. But in the end, we only want a single solution. And uh, we're going to uh, merge on 2 n over 3 bits. And that will be a single solution because we have two lists which are of size 2 to the n over 3. And we have 2 n over 3 bits that remain to be put to 0. So in total, the time complexity is 2 to the n over 3. If we, have, if we had 8 lists, it would be 2 to the n over 4. If we, if we had 16 lists, it would be 2 to the n over 5, and so on. In the quantum setting, um, there is a similar query complexity. Uh, in that case, we're given quantum record access to H, uh, to the function that produces elements. This is optimal query complexity, which is 2 to the n over k plus 1, instead of n over k, which was given by Vilos and Spadek. And uh, for any k, uh, there are previous algorithms that give you time complexities, such as n over 3 for, for collisions, uh, instead of n over 2, and an exponent 1 over 2 plus log 2 of k, instead of 1 over 1 plus log 2 of k, for any k. Um, and all these complexities, so th these are algorithms that use uh, quantum accessible memory. Uh, I'm going to focus on that, but there are also results without. But these are sim more simple to, to analyze. Okay, so in, in this previous work, we had a very similar curve as classically, and actually the algorithms uh, that were used were very similar. Um, and the curve was decreasing step by step, right? And in this uh, new framework that I'm going to present, we can reach better than that, and we can do something that doesn't happen classically, that is decreasing the time complexity at each new value of k strictly, and having a, mu a much more smooth uh, curve for these complexity exponents. So now I'm going to, to, to present a framework that uh, enables to do that and uh, give a few examples. Okay, so in order to, to, to perform this uh, quantum merging steps, we need, we're going to use uh, quantum search. In order to present quantum search, we can start by presenting classical search. So classical search uh, is where, classical exhaustive search is where we have a search space and we have good elements in this search space, and we know how to recognize a good element. And we know how to sample an element from the search space at random. Uh, so if we're able to do that, then we can turn this sample from the search space into a sample from the good subspace only. And we just need to uh, sample repeatedly from the search space and test all the time if we have a good, uh, if we have a good element or not. And we need to repeat that, depending on the number of good elements t among n, we need to repeat that n over t times. And so we're going, really going to see that as a, a function, like an operator that transforms a sampling from the search space into a sampling for the solution space. Because in the quantum setting, things are really similar, except that everything is quantum. Um, if we have a quantum algorithm that samples from x and a quantum algorithm that tests if an element is good, and I don't even need to go into the details, then we can obtain a quantum algorithm that samples from the good subspace. And it does only need to repeat uh, this uh, sampling and testing operation square root of n over t times instead of n over t. This is where these uh, famous square root speedup for quantum search arrives. And this, uh, well, we need to implement these functions as quantum algorithms, but that's all. And once we have done that, we'll also have a quantum algorithm that if we, if we measure uh, the results, then we can obtain one element from J. But we can also use this sampling uh, inside another quantum search, and we can pile 
PyLab quantum searches, the same way we would do for classical searches. This is uh, an interesting feature. Okay. Classical merging can be seen as a sampling procedure. Uh, here, is, here is how. We want to create this list L um, from these two uh, lists L1 and L2. But what we're going to do actually is to sample from the list L. And in order to sample from the list L, we suppose that L2 has been created, it is stored somewhere, and we're going to sample elements from L1. And when we sample from L1, we try to match these elements against L2 and to find someone that has uh, a matching prefix so that we can uh, put a new element in L. So there is some there is a time uh, to sample from L that depends on the time to sample from L1 and on the number of new zeros we, we want to, to obtain. And if we wanted to compute the full join, uh, the full list L, then we simply can sample from it repeatedly. If we put that this idea in Wagner's algorithm, this means that we don't want to build the list L0 we want to sample from it. Okay, this doesn't change a lot because L0 has only one element anyway. So we want to sample from L0 once. Hooray! But then what we're going to do is to suppose that L3 join L4 has been built and is stored somewhere, it is given, and we're going to sample from L0 by sampling from L1 join L2. And we need to sample from L1 to L2, 2 to the number 3 times before we find someone in L0. And if we suppose again that L2 has been stored in memory and is somewhere, then we can do that by sampling from L1. So there is a, a pile of searches. And in the algorithm, we're going to sample from L1, and then uh, this will enable us to sample from L1 to L2, and then this will enable us to sample from the final list. This doesn't change anything to the classical time complexity of Wagner's algorithm. This uh, merely changes the amount of memory, because now we're doing everything here uh, by only storing two lists, L2 and uh, like the two blue ones. Um, but it's really important in the quantum setting. Because in the quantum setting, this whole red branch here is an exhaustive search that we can do quantumly. So this is the idea of quantum merging. The list that we put in blue here is going to remain exactly the same. It's a list that is built and stored in memory and it's going to help us. And then we're going to sample from the list L1 and to use that in order to sample from the list L. And we use quantum search everywhere. So the time to sample from L has been reduced by a square root factor compared to the previous formula. So on this tree, uh, this means that the time to compute the red branch, the time to uh, sample this element of S0, is reduced by a square root factor. So instead of uh, needing to uh, sample classically L1 to the number three times, we need to sample it quantumly two to the number six times. So this is great, but it doesn't change anything to the time complexity because we still have these two blue intermediates which are of size two to the number three and which cost the same time to create. So what we need to do now is to adapt to these uh, quantum capacities. We need to rebalance the tree and to, in order to re-optimize, we're going to take smaller lists L2 and L3 join L4, and we're going to take a much bigger list L1, a much bigger space to span using reverse algorithm and quantum search, and a much smaller space uh, in the intermediate lists. So we're going to take L1 of size 2 to the number 2, and we're going to take uh, the others of size 2 to the number 4, and then everything is balanced with a complexity 2 to the number 4. In general, uh, a KXOR problem can be decomposed in, uh, in many ways because you can consider it, uh, you can consider it as, a, as, a, as another problem which involves smaller K prime XOR problems and so on. 
and we try to optimize the strategy over all the possible decompositions using the fact that at each, at each time a new list is going to be sampled using quantum searches that use intermediate lists, the, blues, uh, the blue ones in the example and if you write down everything then there is uh, this space of possible merging uh, strategies to span and the, the exponents in the time complexities uh, optimizing them is a linear problem so you can find the best strategies uh, using a mi mixed integer linear programming framework which is what we did and uh, this enabled us to find these merging strategies that led to the complexities we, we saw in the graph and then we moved on to actual proofs uh, for it so we, we got this uh, closed formula for the complexity here in the case where there are many solutions so among all examples that are presented at the beginning uh, these examples were actually all for the single solution case and sometimes we also have uh, intermediate examples where uh, there are not there are a few solutions only if there is a single solution to find then we can try to merge as well and we can try to do similarly but uh, we're going to run into troubles um, for example in the full list example that I'm going to keep all merges are going to become trivial because if we don't do that if we if we if we put a non-trivial prefix in the in the join uh, operators here then we were going to miss the solution so in fact we can't uh, we can't really merge we're forced to do something trivial well however we're going to use another idea we still want to merge because merging is a very efficient operation and why not and we still want to merge and use uh, a non-empty prefix but uh, since we since we are going to miss the, the solution we have to repeat the computation for all values of this prefix and this is Schroeppel and Shamir's for this algorithm and in general this is the dissection technique uh, of uh, Dinur, Duncan, Malkeller and Shamir of Crypto12 Classically this is really interesting to save memory but we are going to see that quantum it also reduces the time complexity which is a nice feature so how does it work for Schopen and Shamir's uh, algorithm? We're taking a prefix of size n over 4 so that when we merge we obtain intermediate lists of size 2 to the n over 4 as well and then uh, well, there is only a solution with uh, probability 2 to the minus n over 4 which means we have to repeat this for every value of s the whole tree here costs only 2 to the n over 4 time so the time complexity in total when we repeat for every s is 2 to the n over 2 but the memory complexity has decreased it's now 2 to the n over 4 in a quantum setting we're going to do the same thing it's just going to be a little more complicated because the intermediate list uh, which was of size 2 to the number 4 is a bit too large for us but we're still going to keep this prefix s of size n over 4 and we're simply adding a new parameter i which defines a choice of sublist of L3 so if we have taken some s and some i we have a sublist here of size 2 to the number 8 an arbitrary sublist and we compute a join here which is a size 2 to the number 8 as well and here we have L2 of size 2 to the number 4 and now we do a Grover search for L1 find an element here and we try to find an element here and this only happens with probability 2 to the minus 3 and over 8 so we have to repeat all of this in a loop if we look at the complexities that this gives then um, we're computing the the join operator in time 2 to the n over 8 we're doing the Grover search in time 2 to the n over 8 and we are looping over all choices of sublist for by 3 and of prefix s and this gives a complexity which is uh, 5n over 16 a little below 2 to the n over 3 
why below to the number three? Because n over three is what we would have obtained if we only try to merge two lists of uh, size two to the number two, basically quantumly. And uh, this is really interesting. This means there is there is really uh, an improvement in the time complexity to do that. Actually, if you have a problem that can be cut in any any number of lists. So if it's a k-list problem with a single solution, but for any k, and this is the case for the subset sum problem, for example, the best time complexity that we could obtain with this method uh, is 2 to the 0 0.3n, which is also smaller than n over 3. And it happens for k equals 5, uh, or multiples of 5. Actually, it turns out that in this case, uh, the, the complexity is really well balanced between the computing uh, computing this intermediate join and uh, doing the Grover search here and doing a, 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 a loop on, on the value of s. This advantage of time in time comes from the fact that in general the quantum advantage in merging is not quadratic. It's, it's less than quadratic. But the advantage in loops is quadratic because we are using reverse algorithm in the loops. Which means as we put more work into the loops, we do better in time than if we were only merging. And this is something that really doesn't happen classically. So if you want to compare with uh, other algorithms that solve the same problem, uh, there is the algorithm by Ambeni that solves the problem for two lists. Basically the uh, element distinctness problem. Or the algorithm of Berstein, Jeffrey, Langer, and Murer solving the four list problem. And this algorithm actually obtained a time to the 0.3n. And it obtains this, but only for, uh, of course, four lists or a multiple of four. And for every k which is not a multiple of four, uh, if we optimize with our exponents, uh, we, we, get, we get a better exponent if optimized with our method. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not optimal only for, only for k, uh, when k is, uh, is a multiple of 4, it's not the best. So, to go back to the problems that, uh, that I briefly mentioned at the beginning of the talk, uh, we could obtain improved algorithms for basically all of them. For the priority check problem, because this is a k-list problem as well. For the k-encryption problem, because uh, this is similar to a k-list problem. For the subset sum, if we if we use simply uh, a k-list algorithm to solve it, we can obtain the best time memory product. Not the best time, because uh, there are better dedicated algorithms. But these algorithms use uh, much more memory than we do. And we could also put that in the CSUM BKW algorithm uh, of SR et al at Crypto18, which is um, an algorithm that uses less memory than the BKW algorithm for, LP, for LPN and LWE. And uh, this improved all the quantum time memory traders. So there are more details uh, about the framework and about the applications in the full version of the paper and we're also some code that is available that computes the best emerging strategies. And well, with that, uh, thank you for your attention.